Okay, welcome back from the uh, previously abbreviated uh, video uh, due to some technical difficulties, but I think we've got those resolved. So I um, want to continue on, and I think I left off. We were just discussing the uh, actual geometry of these uh, the screw inside this barrel and how we had a volumetric decrease as we moved farther and farther from left to right to the end of this screw this little volumetric area continues to decrease and decrease um, and so I wanted to uh, show that to you on this uh, specific diagram So what is taking place here as this as this material and again these are all small little pellets um, as this material begins to compress 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 uh, the flight depth obviously is gradually decreasing and compressing those solid pe pellets now of course there's a certain amount of volume there's a lot of air in there and so as it decreases decreases of course the air uh, is forced out of the of the melting process. But it's, a, it's, again, the rotating of this essentially Archimedean type screw that forces these, from a molecular level, forces these uh, uh, molecules, these polymer molecules, to shear across one another, uh, which obviously uh, adds a certain amount of mechanical energy and heat. Um, and so it essentially is heating and melting the pellets by this shearing action, this molecular shearing action, uh, what we call adiabatic heating. Um, and that ultimately melts the plastic. Now that's how the plastic gets from a solid to a liquid state. Uh, and it's referred to as plasticizing here. It's referred to as plasticizing. Now the interesting part about this is that there is no actual external heat applied uh, to really try to melt this polymer because again the polymers melt at different temperatures some of the low uh, linear and low density of polymers uh, polyethylenes can melt uh, you know 350 375 something like that where where some of the higher ones like polycarbonate uh, polyamid nylon etc they could be all the way up close to 500 degrees so uh, but there are, as you'll see here on this diagram, there are what we call external heater bands. Now, the purpose of these heater bands here really is once this, this polymer has melted, then uh, it essentially tries to maintain a, uh, a, a consistent temperature of that melt because the issue with polymers is, is that you can overheat them uh, and then some of them severely begin to degrade. So you have to be very careful on, on that. Uh, and uh, again, so this is the, the purpose of these heater bands, external heater bands. Essentially, you set the temperature to where this melt should be, uh, and then you try to maintain that temperature. All right. So um, this, is the, this is the ultimate process here. Uh, and there are three specific sections or zones within this extruder screw uh, scenario um, and there's the first section from from the end to the beginning or to 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 about a third of that is called the feed section so obviously the volumetric air, uh, amount here is large 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 We're trying to get as much of the of the pellets into the into the barrel here uh, at that point, then it's the, again, this volumetric area begins to decrease. In other words, uh, the ID of this screw is becoming larger and larger. As you can see, the OD obviously doesn't change, but the ID becomes larger and larger. And that's why it's such a good depiction of this, of this screw. They really did a good job here. Uh, but at any rate, so then it enters into the compression section. All right. Now, the compression section... Uh, Again, this is where the most of the shearing takes place, and the, the compression ratios can vary depending upon the polymer, etc. Can vary anywhere from a one to one to a five to one 
uh, compression ratio uh, building, building up here inside this volumetric area or zone here. Okay, and then it gets towards the end. It's more of a very finer, finer volume. Uh, and that's called the metering section. So we have the feed, compression, and metering section. And you can see the flight depths here are very, very shallow, which <coughs> obviously aids in the shearing process a little bit more as, and also adds pressure. So that then ultimately it can be, once this thing continues as it's melted, when it gets to this area, it's basically all uh, in a liquid form. It's going to have a, a rather high viscosity most of the time, uh, but nonetheless, it is can be forced through um, the end of this and into the uh, die and come out. Whatever whatever the opening of this die may look like, symmetry again, like we talk about when we're extruding things, uh, whatever that die opening looks like is what you're going to get coming out of here. So, and they call this the uh, extrudate here. All right. Now, this breaker plate, this is unique really to... Um, to extrusion operations again this extrusion this screw is just constantly rotating and so all it's doing is providing a flow and, and at this point a pressurized flow uh, large area to small area through this through this orifice uh, in the uh, die and so what this does is kind of it, 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 it turns it into more of a sort of a laminar flow with these breaker plates in here uh, you know has kind of the geometry uh, you know of the honeycomb kind of a thing so that it, it smooths out the flow and makes it a little more laminar to go through here so that's the purpose of these breaker plates here okay all right so that's uh the kind of the how this works uh with respect again this is just this is the extruder uh process the extrusion process and we we is from your slides and from the the video that that I sent you, you can see it is just basically a continuous profile shape coming out of this uh, this die opening here. Okay, all right. Um, and so now I wanted to uh, talk a little more specific about the, the one of the other processes that's very very significant and important, especially here in Texas, and it's injection molding. Okay, so this is this is a view of a, an injection molding machine. You can see this section right here is very very similar, very very similar to what we had uh, on the other um, on the other uh, machine on the extruder part, and um, so I wanted to kind of show you that and. Uh, Let's start down here uh, in the beginning where we start. Uh, this, this actually, uh, oh, this is, this is, uh, okay. let's see, uh, this is, we're showing, okay, uh, it's a little bizarre to be honest, uh, because normally what's down here, this is the, this is the motor end of this, and, uh, from, from here to here is what we call the injection unit, and from here to here we call the clamping unit. There's two separate units to an uh, injection molding machine. All right. So again, um, this is what we call an injection areas. One's called the injection unit and then it's called the clamping unit. Okay, so let's start down this side. And uh, what we have here, excuse me, is a, uh, we have to have some kind of motor obviously to turn this screw. And uh, this is not as good of a depiction uh, of a screw as what was in the previous extruder, but nonetheless it's, it's similar geometry to what we had down there with the exception of this uh, front end of this because it has a non-return valve but be that as it may 
So we need to provide rotation. All right, we need to provide rotation on this. And um, so we're going to do that vis-a-vis a, -vis a uh, hydraulic motor. Nine times out of the ten is going to be an hydraulic motor. Um, and obviously we're going to need this hydraulic motor uh, because it offers up a significant amount of torque capacity because you're turning a screw and at the same time you're turning the solid you begin to turn a solid and you're eventually turning it into a liquid and that liquid is at a high viscosity uh, and so it needs to provide a lot of torque in here so uh, traditionally there is a, a hydraulic motor driving and turning the screw all right now um, let's look at once this thing is turning and once we get, once the polymer reaches down in this little zone right here, it's again turned into a liquid. And so essentially now this screw becomes just a two, two functional screw, uh, multi-purpose tool here, because now not only does it melt or plasticize the polymer, melt, but it also acts like a syringe. Because now you see there's a cylinder attached to this, there's a cylinder attached to this screw, it actually shoves this whole screw forward and whatever volume is here is going to be uh, under pressure uh, pushed into the two mold tabs here, which is the mold tab here and mold tab here. Alright? And so when 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 it's getting ready, when when the melt is ready, this whole screw shoves forward these be the uh, hydraulic cylinder and pushes and forces this polymer melt into the mold cavity. Alright? So there's a there's a, a lot of difference and obviously you can see now between that and what the should be. But the same operating principle with respect to how we plasticize the uh, the polymer in here. Okay. Now uh, this screw then uh, once this, this melt goes through here uh, then it obviously enters into this guy, the mold cavity, and uh, and then it takes a certain amount of time for it to solidify, and then the two molds uh, uh, have separate, and the part comes out, and, and then you close the mold, two mold has, and you start the process again. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about this. Um, and again, uh, all any material going in here has to be thoroughly thoroughly dry before this starts. Okay, now, once it, let's talk about the parameters here, okay? There's three very essential parameters uh, that are being controlled on a generator. And they are, first of all, uh, temperature, time, and pressure. Okay? Those three parameters uh, all have to be set perfectly for you to get a good part out of here. Now remember, you're not just making one or two parts, you're making thousands of parts. And so time, or temperature, time, and pressure all have to be uh, 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 input to this to this machine uh, correctly if you're going to get a good part. Now let's talk about temperature, obviously. We also have to have the right temperature. Again, we talked about the, the heating barrel, the heating uh, bands and the shearing and all that. I also have to have the right temperature. We don't want it too hot because it'll degrade. We don't want it too cool because then it, the, the viscosity uh, is too high and it's difficult to push that high viscosity of polymer into these fine uh, cavities. Uh, and then, of course, you may not melt the whole thing. So temperature is important. All right, time is important. Time is extremely important because um, the time, what we're talking about here, is not only to melt this, but more importantly, the time that the, the polymer solidifies, re-solidifies inside this mold cavity. That's extremely important. And uh, again, since you're making thousands and thousands of these things, if you can save one second of cycle time of when this thing solidifies and it doesn't, then you're saving a lot of time, aka a lot of money. So it's extremely important to have the right timing of just how long it takes. So what we have to do is uh, we don't want this mold to be overly heated and of course it would be with a hot molten plastic in here and this is obviously solid steel then uh, it's going to heat up rapidly so we have to put chilling 
uh, and put coolant uh, uh, passageways inside this to keep it at a constant temperature so you have a constant temperature, a constant mold solidification time uh, to increase the efficiency of this. So that's obviously very important. Um, and then pressure. Uh, these build up pressures, uh, injection pressures, of anywhere from seven to 8,000 PSI average. Sometimes they can go as high as 15 to 20,000 PSI. But again, you don't want to over put too much pressure in here because, as we know, uh, this is a cavity and you, you are under pressure forcing this liquid into a surface, an area, all right, and so obviously we know something about you know what stress force over area. So this pressure, you're, you're exerting this um, over this area, and so it's just a multiplication. So so essentially what you're what you the result in here is a force, and the, the force here is what drive trying to drive these two mold uh, uh, paths apart. So that's the resultant force. You got a pressure over an area. So that the result is a force, and the force is trying to drive these two uh, mold halves apart. So therefore, you have to have a clamping mechanism. Now this one's just showing a clamping cylinder. A lot of times it's, it's a completely different uh, operation here with, with two bar linkages and such, toggles uh, and joints, but a uh, mechanical system, but this is just showing a simple hydraulic press that's attached to this platen. Uh, which is attached to the mold, and it would just it would hold this in place. But again, with too much pressure on here, you might exceed, and then of course, you know, uh, that's why it's so important to to put the right size mold into the right size machine, because it may it may end up trying to split this mold half apart if, if this area is too great and the pressure is too great. Okay, so let's talk about the, how the machines are classified. They're classified according to the clamping tonnage. So they're classified according to their clamping tonnage. All right. And again, that's how much force this thing can, can keep and maintain these two die halves uh, uh, together while the wall is being uh, under high pressure, the molten polymer being put into the uh, mold itself. All right. Okay, the timer went off a minute ago. I'm going to have to shut this down. I'll